Hello my soccer universe. Well, it's been a week since the last Eredivisie League uh, review. However, Feyenoord have clinched the title and I think it's worth noting uh, that and honoring uh, the big club from Rotterdam, their 16th title. I have to say I'm a little bit surprised that it's only 16. Uh, it's also interesting if you look over the um, uh, Dutch titles that it was much closer between Ajax and Feyenoord even going into the 80s and then Ajax actually took over. So I'm not meaning this to this Feyenoord here uh, and it has been only six years since the last title that a much uh, bigger weight period before that. However, I what I want to underline that like with Napoli, this title means more to Feyenoord than to uh, other teams, namely PSV and um, Ajax in the Eredivisie and so the celebrations were actually quite 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 big. I would even argue that among all the leagues that I'm covering that this is the second most important. Napoli they have not won it in ages and it was the first without Maradona only the third or whatever that takes the top spot but for me uh, Feyenoord winning this title even if Arsenal would have won the Premier League which they're not, not gonna do um, this means the second most. It also has a personal connection to me uh, with personally, you know, Gernot Trauner, he is from Linz, my hometown. He went to Feyenoord um, last season already and seeing him winning his first title, um, it was actually nice and you know, being a local guy and coming from Lusk, being the former captain, I always wanted him to do well. I uh, was a little bit sad that he made the error that they lost the Conference League final last uh, season. But more than happy that he now can celebrate a title because it's a guy from Linz. Titles in soccer, unless it's second division, don't come all that often, which is something that bugs the heck out of me. Now, um, a little bit smug, I could say it's actually second Eredivisie title. Why? Well, in 1920, the Eredivisie was abandoned and I think Ajax was in the lead back then, but... In Europe, Lusk defeated PSV rather convincingly, uh, I think 4-1 and 0-0. Uh, nil -nil. And then uh, they also beat AZ on aggregate 3-1, a 2-0 and a 1-1, completely dominated them. And AZ just before the league called the band and dominated Ajax. So by that virtue, I always claim that Lusk may not have won an Austrian championship that season, which they probably sure should have in a way. But they won the Dutch Championship, so Trauna, second Eredivisie title for him. And also, if Rapid Vienna can claim a German title, yes, they won it on the field. Lusk can definitely, by transitive property, claim an Eredivisie title for 1920. Okay, rant over. Uh, congratulations to Feyenoord. I think this was not only an important title, this was the most a most deserved title. It was a tight title race for a while. However, the way that they beat Ajax away from home and in generally got the right results at the right time, Arne Slot has done an amazing job. Also consider that I think a huge portion, I want to say eight starters from the Europa Conference League final last season are not with the team any anymore. Their scouting is excellent. They have a, a clear uh, identity. They also got the support from the fans. Yes, it's always uh, can always be volatile. And at the moment, you know, the Dutch are trying to take away the mantle of vol most volatile fans from League 1. But it was a really, really great scene to see. And a very well-deserved title. And I have to say, I am very, very happy to see it. Not only for Trauner, but also for the entire fan, fan fans. Because it means so much to them. And it's all I cannot really say more than congratulations. And it's also great to see a change up top in the NFVC. I also have to, have to say that I kind of called it already last season. The change is afoot with uh, Ten Hag leaving. But... To see that makes it more interesting and very fun to watch. Uh, but we're gonna start this video uh, talking about some events in League 1 that were also interesting. Laos keep their push for the Champions League spot alive, coming back from a 1 0 down and a man down because uh, Kevin Danso got sent off. But Frankowski 
before the half equalize with a penalty and for for now then uh, right after the half get the win big three points four loss again keeping their home uh advantage alive and uh moving closer to a champions league spot and maybe even third place can work out if we you know if west ham win the conference league then um strasbourg also a really really big win because strasbourg are in heavy uh danger of getting relegated but that 2-0 win over nice might actually see them uh get get out of it diallo scoring both goals the first one or in the first minute and a penalty in the second half uh psg easy 5-0 win of course everyone messi has been playing but it was kind of anonymous also uh now i remember um this was kind of a diversity round in Liga. So all teams were playing with rainbow colored uh, numbers and some teams like Mopi also released rainbow jerseys. I have to say the rainbow colors on the PSG jersey look really, really nice. But the other teams where it looks also quite nice. But you know, the dark background and the, the rainbow looks really, really cool. Uh, the game was, you know, it was the destruction that everyone expected. Uh, Ruiz and Hakimi getting the uh, first two goals in the first half. Then Mbappe getting two, the second one being a brilliant strike in the 54th. Yusuf on goal, no messy contribution whatsoever. And also, uh, it tells you a whole, whole lot if no assists have been given up because most goals then kind of um, result from goal and scrambles. However, the big downer for PSG is that uh, a free kick was given uh, on a foul form for Messi and then it's, uh, they came a scuffle with Hakimi and then Man uh, Manjani were all sent off for no apparent reason. They start started the fight and I'm really thinking if you're 5-0 up, getting a red card is probably one of the stupidest things that can ever happen to you. Uh, Lyon's great form came to a halt with a 2 1 loss at Clermont Foot. Uh, Brest, a big 1 0 win over Osea. Osea kind of hanging also in that scene uh, on that edge of getting re relegated and Brest basically moving closer to safety. Um, we had then uh, Rennes at home. They are brilliant. 4 4 0 away. They're losing, of course. Toulouse, not nil-nil. I think that secures Toulouse a league uh, status and not just staying in there with Osair in a battle. Monaco and Lille, nil-nil. A result that doesn't help anyone. And OM, 3-1 over Angers. Uh, also a comeback week victory because Sima gave uh, Osair an early lead. But then Alexis Sanchez, who has been one of the outstanding players in league uh, this season, equalizes and the Payet and Veretout make it a win. OM staying on track with loss. Maybe it will not be enough for the title. So if you look at the standings, uh, PSG, yes, it's three rounds to go. They have six points. So if they win the next, the next round, then just by goal difference, they have already won it. Although you uh, mathematically you need four games, but you know. Um, Lance and Marseille still keeping uh, the spots behind them. Uh, I think OM theoretically could still win this title with eight points uh, away, but then it would need PSG losing three. So it's it's a more than an outside shot <laughs> to make that one. Monaco uh, and Lille, as I said, they played uh, this nil-nil draw. I think they actually invited Rennes and Lyon more into it with it. I mean, Monaco a little bit safer than Lille, but I think a winner would have been needed there. And if we look at the bottom, uh, we have now Ajax Zou is already relegated as Artois and Angers, but it is between Nantes and Auxerre with potentially Brest getting in there as well. Strasbourg also, but you know, uh, Strasbourg and Brest at the moment looking rather safe. It is five points away from the drop to drop and so huge turn 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 around for them it's realistically between Ossia and not although not are at the moment behind uh they are the team that have the better chance because they have the, a little bit nicer schedule there and that's also what you see reflected in the expected standings everything rather clear maybe between second and third there is a little bit between loss and uh om there could be something happening but loss holding the advantage there again uh means potential the, the, the difference between second and third is that uh it's for a potential uh play uh, champions league playoff however west ham win the conference league then actually uh they get three champions league places to france and i think there might even be more uh, space spots falling their way um we already talked about re 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 relegation but it's very much settled except for the midfield blob there 
upcoming two rounds. Leon Monaco, a pretty big game also for European qual qualification. Not relegation battle, have to play against uh, Montpellier. Auxerre have to play PSG. So you see or, or, already that, that PSG, can, if Auxerre gets something from PSG, then I think it will flip flop. But that is the big stumbling block there. Lens have to go to Lorient to keep it alive. And Lille OM is probably the big name match there and then the round after a uh, not have to go to Lille or say I have to go to Toulouse you know it is a little bit more in Nantes favor for now I want to say and it's also in, in interesting who, who, who will end up in the European spots over in the Netherlands uh you know you see the the most of Dr. Zazir 20 uh for nil over um uh, Nijmegen and Sparta losing at Volendam, meaning you know the positions for the playoff spots might still change around. Herren Veen will nil nil of Excelsior also is kind of now on the uh, on the brink of not making this playoff. Uh, Groningen already uh, relegated again a match abandoned. Smoke bombs were being thrown in the match against Ajax in the ninth minute. Match is abandoned. Will be completed this t upcoming Tuesday. Uh, it's already the second time in a row. I think uh, spectators might have to get banned. The big one, of course, was Feyenoord against Goethe Eagles. Feyenoord just need, needed a point, but you know, a win is always better with the big celebrations. And the uh, goals came fortunately early and in short succession. Idrisi and Jimenez in the 15th and 18th set Feyenoord on that way. There was actually not really a coming back for the go ahead. Had Eagles game filled a little bit out. It was all about the celebrations. Igor Pejao added a third one in the second half and then once the whistle and everything broke loose flares everywhere and even the title uh at the trophy has been handed down and i have to say this was really nicely done very quickly everyone celebrating get the stage up up there you saw then the Feyenoord legends from percy and van bronkhorst uh also up on the uh at, at the stage which i absolutely love and celebrations everywhere and was happy 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 days in rotterdam happy days maybe also in alkmaar you know uh you have to beat basically west ham we talk a lot about where west ham in this video um but you know they had a five nil lead uh, against emmen uh, already at the half and could therefore rest some players the game was already pushed a little a little bit later uh because the players had to come back from london but uh you got a lot of calm confidence there uh scoring five in the first half and then even uh, being uh, being able to make loads of changes around the 60 minute mark and psv also comeback win against sittard uh best goal of that that one was probably the first one by gladon uh bicycle kick to make it one nil for city but Luc de Jong equalized then many trying to have many shots trying to to win it not really creating much until xavi simmons in the 82nd with a kind of wide range shot really, really nice gets it 2-1 for psv underlining their uh, claim for second spot in the table which they already hold ajax uh, are now falling behind that set but uh, However, their game against um, Groningen is not in, in there. I would expect Ajax get those three, three points and you see it on the other side in the adjusted standings that, it, that um, they at the moment are still ahead if we account for games played. But PSV is very much in the driver's seat uh, to getting the second spot. Ajax potentially only Europa League if not Conference League. We also see the playoff spots for this last Conference League spot. Um, there are four teams Herren Veen now kind of getting in there but it, it's a tight one 20 Sparta and Utrecht should make it in there and then there's an eight spot and on the bottom Groningen can be already down it bits between Excelsior and Emmen to make it into a relegation playoff Emmen is in that one um and you know expected standings also very much settled league overall potentially at that could overtake Ajax but it's not expected last two rounds and note that the last round for now is scheduled to be all played at the same time um you know it has not much to uh talk about here we saw that many things already kind of pre-decided also all about the playoff spots um but you know the last round at least looks has three interesting matches with Z against psv Feyenoord against vitesse well, not not much play in 20 against ajax so i uh, just wanted to note that that was it for me. Again, congratulations, Feyenoord, for your 16th title. Hopefully more to come, especially if you keep Trauna around. He will. 
hopefully finally score, because Velasquez got a lot of headers. For Feyenoord, he has not scored yet as far as I know, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so they get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.